Welcome to another CBA or Urbana Level 2 curriculum video. For this session I want to look at forging a pair of scrolling tongs from inch by 38 flat stock. Firstly scrolling tongs are just plain heavy to, handy to have around the forge. Uh, I have various pairs with various length of reins and jaw design. Um, they're at the front of my tong rack. My usual layoff uh, is from the near side edge and it's about an inch and eighth or an inch and three sixteenth. And this is true for many stock sizes, uh, but it's usually dependent on the style of tongs that I'm making. Again, inch and eighth, inch and three sixteenth is normally pretty good for you. With this particular pair of tongs made from the inch by three eighths, um, we're going to forge it on its side and I want you to deliver half face blows, which if you look at the top left slide, my half face blows are anything but half face, the more two thirds onto the anvil, one third off. And I want you to bring the stock down until it is half its width. And basically you're going to end up with something that is uh, half an inch square. Just as a side note here, if I put a division in here, you'll notice that if that's 50% of our original stock and that's 25%, I've got a growth there of about 25% elongation. Just something to keep in mind. Take the stock down until it gets that square cross section. Again, I've itemized that. Here's our 25, 50, 75, 100%. And that's about a 25% increase. Uh, that happens a lot in my forgings, uh, but that's another topic. Once you've got your half inch square, we're going to forge a taper down to the end. Um, now I'm showing two different sections here. I've got a parallel section nearest to the boss, and then I've got a tapered section uh, on the end of the jaw. It doesn't have to look like this. You can have a, a general uh, sweep of a taper all the way back to the boss. Uh, I just want to get something that's got two distinct sections to the jaw. You'll also notice I'm working on a, an anvil block. And that is so I can keep the shoulder of the tongs I've just created down so I don't hit it with the hammer. And yet I've still got clearance to have a miss hit uh, with my hammer. If I work on the middle of the anvil, if this is somewhere in the middle of the face, I run the risk of putting a smiley face in the middle of the anvil surface. Not something I want to do. The other thing I want you to note is I'm not taking this down to super sharp. I'm taking it down to about uh, one and a half mil or one sixteenth of an inch in uh, square cross section. At this stage, because this is something you're going to have to make two of, I want you to record the two lengths. I want you to record the length of the taper and I want you to record the length of the overall jaw. And I do this typically in the step. I just do a couple of chalk marks. So when I make the other side, I can hold it up for comparison and make sure I've got everything equal to the first jaw. Remember, we're making two uh, identical pieces. Once you've got your um, square taper finished, you're going to have to make it octagon and round. And again, because we've got the taper and the parallel section, you're going to have to do this in two sections. So the first job is forge the taper to an octagon, and then we're going to forge the parallel section to the octagon. And again, I want to stress that I am working from the outside. So I'm not going to bring this um, shoulder up where I could hit it with the hammer. I'm just going to work on the two outside corners and then the four outside edges of this octagon as I continue to take this to a round cross section. Once I've got the round cross section, I'm going to come in and I'm going to rasp these jaws smooth. I do inside and outside, but uh, that's my baggage. You can pick it up if you want. Certainly you need to do the inside. This is normal pair of tongs um, and I want to show you that there is a shoulder here that normally reaches across the other boss. This is the thickness of the boss. And you can see that shoulder is very close to being the same thickness and that reaches across and that gives you the full width of the jaw. On this bottom right photograph, I want you to note that that shoulder also slopes because of the creep of the anvil. You're working over a radius edge and when you work over the radius edge, the material will creep over that radius edge. <clears throat> now when we're going to create our shoulder in this um, 
scrolling tongs, we don't have enough material, as you can see here, to make something that's going to go across the other side of the boss. Uh, but I do want you to make a token gesture of making this shoulder. And I want it to be in the right place. We're actually going to refer to this um, crease here at the top. That's going to be a datum when we do our next set of measurements. So this has to be in the right place. And you'll notice it's got a similar angle to the other side of the other angle of the boss. No matter what you do to the jaws of a pair of tongs, come back to where you first started. And now I'm talking about making bolt jaw tongs or things like that, or box jaw tongs, where you're going to play around with the jaws a little bit. But if you come back to where you first started with that half face blow, you're going to turn the top of the bar, the top of the bar, away from your hammer hand. And that's going to give you a pair of tongs that you can use in your non-hammer hand. Um, the slope of the reins will change. Uh, they can be left-handed or right-handed and you want a pair of tongs that will fit in your tong hand and not made for your hammer hand. So you're going to turn the top of the bar away from your hammer hand and that will make everything correct. The right-hand slide, um, I got, I'm showing here that um, I've got the uh, the shoulder here or the crease right in the bottom here just slightly back from the edge of the anvil and that's to allow for the creep of forging over the edge of uh, an anvil. Now this is a normal pair of tongs this is three quarter inch square so I would get a lot of creep with the, um, the scrolling tongs this is not going to happen so we're actually going to line up that, uh, that little uh, section there right with the edge of the anvil but it's something to keep in mind as you make other tongs. Half face blow, again you'll note I've got two thirds, one third or thereabouts. I'm working off a radius edge and we're just trying to set up a nice little shoulder. And again, the shoulder should be about the same angle, same length, etc. <clears throat> as the top of the boss. If this is in the right place, um, I want you to then turn the top of the bar, going back to the left hand slide, turn the top of the bar away from your hammer hand. You're going to square the stock up so it is perpendicular to the edge of the anvil. You're going to lift the stock up with your elbow only. Keep the shoulder quiet. It's going to give you about 30 degrees or so, a strong 30. And then I want you to slide it off again, a radius edge. And I want about 7 eighths of an inch or 22 mil, if you want, uh, from the datum, if it's in the right place, to the edge of the anvil. If this is not in the right place, you're going to have to change the measurements to suit what you've got. And then I want you to deliver a half face blow. So this is what we had. We turn the top of the stock away from your hand, square it up, lift it up with your elbow only, keep your shoulder quiet, slide it out about 22 mil or seven eighths of an inch and deliver a half face blow. And this is exactly the same move. This is a decent pair of tongs here on three quarter inch square bar, the same sort of shoulder. Uh, you can see it's the same sort of angle and we've got the same measurement about seven eighths of an inch. Let's look at it from the other side. Uh, you don't have the shoulder coming down, but it's about that uh, seven eighths of an inch. This is the other side. You'll note that as you forge in the shoulder, you're going to get some lipping top and bottom and some cupping in the middle here. And I need you to dress that as soon as it occurs. If you allow it to stand up to the point where it gets too vertical when you dress it, it's going to fall over and it's going to make a cold chunt. Uh, a normal boss and a decent rivet in it is going to resist the twisting forces that are often going to be applied to this style of tongs, the scrolling tongs. So make sure you've got a decent bit of material in here as you go on. What we're going to do now is dress the pair of tongs. I like a rectangular or a rhombus shaped, shall I say, um, boss. Um, common wisdom is to have it round. And that's fine by me. I'm going to show you my way because that's something I'm familiar with. And if you want it round, just knock the corners off. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to step with my hammer leg towards the anvil and I'm going to put my shoulder more over the offside edge. That's going to change the angle of the tongs. So at this stage, I'm now engaging my um, shoulder. So I've lift up a bit on the tongs. You can see that's the gap here a little. I've got a very good heat running all the way through this because we're going to upset through this. So I want to make sure that I've got a good heat all the way through the boss. And I'm going to deliver a few blows. 
Don't overcook it. We're going to cycle through these steps a number of times. Don't try and do it all in one heat. That's going to be to your disadvantage. As soon as you've done a few blows, we're going to take this surface, the front of the boss, and we're going to apply it on top of, again, radius edge, on top of the anvil face. And we're going to bring your hammer down on the back surface of the boss. Again, a couple of blows. Then we're going to drop this material down onto the face of the anvil. We're going to do a couple of blows on the, uh, the bottom of the tongs. This is one of the few times where you'll see me cycle the hammer. I'm going to try and bring material into what I want to be a sharp corner. So it's exactly the same as making an upset square corner. I'm just going to cycle my hammer just slightly, to try and bring material into that corner. Of course, all of these three moves are going to thicken the boss. Last thing I want you to do, again, protecting the shoulder. Uh, so put the shoulder in the right place over the edge you used before, and then just a couple of blows and um, flatten the boss. What I'm looking for is about one, eight, one inch or 25 mil <clears throat> between the flat. So an inch this way and an inch top to bottom. So we're striving that and I would cycle through that. Here's the first gig. We're going to hit this. It's going to upset this material. <clears throat> Second gig, we're going to put that face on the anvil. Come on from the back. Drop it down. Again, a couple of blows. Make sure you've got the heat. We don't want lipping and cupping if we can avoid it. Drop the bar down. Cycle your hammer. Try and pull material into this corner. Protecting the shoulder. Holding it over the same edge as you did before. Flatten the boss. Bring it back to parent stock. Three eighths of an inch. And you're aiming for about one inch between flats. So what can happen? What can go wrong? The first is if you don't get your shoulder over the anvil or if you hold your hammer at a bit of a, a wonky angle here, you can see that I am not getting a parallel surface here. I've started to forge in and I've lost this corner. Uh, so now I'm starting to make those half round or quarter round reins. Uh, this is not what I want. So make sure you take control of your hammer. I changed position of my grip. In fact, I think my index finger runs down the top of the hammer handle so I can get over it and make sure that that surface is parallel to the edge of the anvil. What else can go wrong? You can overcook it. If you forge this too much or forge the next move too much, you're too strong or too um, too long in the, the saddle, then what happens is when you come to this final move here, when you hit this, there's nothing supporting it underneath. And this is just going to roll out and make one long flat section. So if you do this, back it off a little bit, leave a little material, leave a little material. Then when you come to this move, there's more material underneath and you can actually forge this and get what you want. So those are the things that go wrong. So we've made the boss. Let's move on. You notice I'm protecting the boss. It's down um, away from my hammer and I've got it away from the bit because I'm going to draw out on the bit. Uh, that move is going to mean you're going to have a little bit of stored material here at the bottom of the reins, which you can get out later by working over uh, a soft edge of the offside edge. And I want you to now draw these reins out. Um, I am looking for the thickest widest section of the reins to be right here at the back of the boss. Everything else tapers away. And I go for more of a, a rectangle rein than a round rein. Rectangle with the corners knocked off. Let's have a look at that. So this is my typical rein. You can see it's rectangular and the corners are knocked off and hopefully you can see that it tapers away from the point just behind the back of the boss. And I make sure everything is nice and smooth. Once that is done, uh, I'm going to start punching or drilling the hole. Rain length. Uh, rain length, my smallest reins typically are 11 inches long. That's the reins, not the whole length of the tongs. Uh, and then I'll go up to maybe 16 inch reins for something if I'm working at the, the fire. So I could, if I'm doing a kneeling of, let's suppose you're making a rose or something, and you, you're working at the fire with these scrolling tongs, I want to stay, I want to keep my hand away from the fire. So I have a slightly longer pair of tongs for doing that job. Okay, moving on. Um, 
If this is your first pair of tongs or you're early in your tongue making career, I'm going to ask you to drill this hole. If, you, uh, if you've got a few under your belt, then sure, go ahead and punch it. But the first thing I want to do is let's look at where we want the hole. Actually, let me back up a little bit. If you have two different sizes of boss, let's say things didn't go quite as you wanted them to, and you've got a small and a larger boss, I want you to work on your small section first. You're going to find the middle of that boss. You're going to drill or punch the hole and then you're going to hold it up to the larger boss and find a place where it fits. If you do it the other way around, if you've got the hole in the larger boss and then you come to the little one or the smaller one, you might be off on an edge somewhere and it's just not going to stand up. So if you've got two different size, work with the small one first. If you're going to punch and I'm showing... Um, just a normal pair of tongs here, our three-quarter square. If you're going to punch, I want you to start hard, finish easy. What does that mean? I want you to start near the edge of the anvil, protecting the shoulder, and go through most of the way, turn it over, and now you can come back anywhere on the face of the anvil to clean out the, the slug, and then maybe go over a pitchel hole just to drift it a little bit to get it to the right size. So start hard with the shoulder down, Finish easy with the shoulder up so this flat surface can move anywhere on the anvil. And then chamfer the edge a little bit um, just to put it under a drill press or so. We'll take a hand, big drill and just hand ream it a little. Um, and you want to take a 5 16th, maybe a little light. I typically do a 3 8 rivet. So for me that would be 3 8 of an inch. You're going to make two of these and they're going to be identical. And then you're going to take one, here's a pair of tongs, you take this top one, you're going to flop it over the bottom one, and it's going to look like this, a normal pair of tongs. So they're identical, they're not mirror images. In this case I'm using a 5 16th rivet, and the rivet is pre-manufactured, and it is an inch and a half long, which is uh, too long for my desired outcome. So I've got 3 8 of an inch here, three eighths of an inch here, three quarters of an inch. And then I've got, it uh, looks like, uh, three quarters of an inch sticking out. That's a little too much for me. So I want about one and a half times the diameter. So if that is five sixteenth, that's going to be uh, 10, 15, 32 or so. So let's call it uh, almost half an inch. So I'm going to cut off that extra eighth of an inch or so. You can certainly leave it, but my experience is if when you start to rivet this, this rivet will fall over rather than upset and make a nice rivet. For me, typically I drive it down until I get the rivet button. And then if I actually want to make a dome, I'm going to come in here with my ball peen hammer and I'm going to take this edge off all the way around and I'm going to make it into a button. Um, but start off just setting it down nice and square. When I'm working this, my this the bottom uh, rein is floating in my hand. I've got all my attention on the top rein. I'm pushing down with my thumb, basically making sure there is no gap between the two boss, or bosses, I suppose, um, that can be filled with this uh, soft rivet. So make sure you push in this top boss down onto the bottom boss and then start to upset for your rivet. If things have gone reasonably well, you should have something like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to close the jaws. Um, the jaws can be a variety of gaps. I've got anything from quarter of an inch down to sixteenth of an inch, depending on what they're intending to do. If you're intending to hold scrolling material on a scrolling jig, you might want something that's a little larger. Let's say it's going to be eighth of an inch at least, maybe three sixteenth. If you're dealing with something like a rose, then you want something that's actually going to touch or maybe a sixteenth of an inch gap. So make sure you're forging the gap to your intended outcome. Perhaps the most important thing of this slide is the fact that I've written hot on this spacer bar. This spacer bar is about three or four inches long um, and it gets, would you believe, hot quite quickly as you're adjusting the jaws. Um, and this happens all quite quickly and it's tempting sometimes just to pick that up with your fingers um, and then of course you've got to burn. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here. I've got the bottom laying flat 
on the anvil surface. I'm going to come in with my hammer, just work on this, the two parallel surfaces, and I'm going to get rid of this little bit of a gap here, forge these two closed. I'm not worried about the tips just yet, I just want the parallel surface to close on this spacer bar. And this spacer bar is half round on the end and should go all the way back to the boss. I've got a little bit of a gap there, but no sharp edges, no sharp corners that are going to dig into that little bit of stored material there. So half round and get it all the way back to the boss. Once you've done that, staying with the plate, I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to hold the taper on the flat of the anvil. You can see I'm working near the offside edge and I'm just going to drop my hammer down and close the taper. Now at this stage, these may not be uh, one jaw above the other. All I'm doing is making them parallel to each other. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. I know I don't have enough material to close this gap, but I just sweeten it a little bit. Give it a little tap, turn it over, give it a little tap from the other side. And then I'm going to move to the offside edge. Here I am. And I'm just going to make the tips of the jaws parallel. That's the important bit for me. Once you've got the jaws correct, uh, I'm going to take another heat and this time my heat is going to be back here at the top of the range. The, I don't care about the, uh, the jaws at this stage. And I'm going to take my heat, reinsert the spacer bar, bear in mind that's hot, and then I'm going to go to my vise, clamp the jaws and the boss in the, the vise, and then this is all reasonably cool. And then I'm going to either open or close or play around with these uh, reins to get them to the spacing that I like. And that, uh, if you've made some scrolling tongs, not scrolling tongs, scrolling irons, um, then you can use those to help get you something that you like. So I'm opening up the jaws here or the reins here and I'm closing them with this other one. I've got a little bend going on here. I like my reins fairly close together so that I can spin them in my hands. Uh, quite quickly and for me it takes less effort to hold on to a pair of tongs where the reins are fairly close than if they're being uh, quite large or if there's a big gap. So that is forging a pair of scrolling tongs. Um, you can see that the uh, this rose was made out of a pair of scrolling tongs that were set to 1 16th of an inch. This marks the end of my show. Uh, I hope you have good luck forging your tongs. And uh, I'll see you on the next show. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.